favourite from my childhood was the novel What Katie Did by Susan Coolidge. I still have my old, rather battered copy of the novel, which I obviously owned in 1968. My name is written in there. There's still the the picture of Katie managing to stand up from her bed after a very, very long time of illness. I love this novel and two of the novels that follow it. The book was written by Susan Coolidge, but that wasn't her actual name. She was Sarah Chancy Woolsey, and she lived from 1835 to 1905. She was born in Cleveland, Ohio, but when she was still quite young, her family moved to Connecticut. During the Civil War, she worked as a nurse, and it was after the Civil War that she began, finally, to write her novels. And then there was no stopping her. The books, the short stories, and the poems poured from her, and many of them proved very popular. Today, she's really only remembered for what Katie did, but there were many, many other works that got published. She also submitted a lot of stories to magazines. She was a very popular writer in her day. What Katie did came out in 1872, and the story is very much based on her own family. Her four younger siblings become some of the car children in the novel, and the character of Katie is strongly based on Sarah Chauncey Woolsey herself. I love the character of Katie. She's at the beginning of the novel a bit naughty and wild. Uh, She tears her clothes, she gets into trouble. She's motherless, but Aunt Izzy is there trying to control the young children of the family, and she has a marvellous father in Dr. He's patient, understanding, and uh, always a very kind father indeed. But one day, Katie decides to go and have a swing on the old family swing in the barn. The father has told her not to use the swing because he thinks one of the staples in the roof is coming loose and he needs to get the local workman to have a look at it. But Katie disobeys those instructions. She gets on the swing, she goes higher and higher, and then suddenly there's a terrible crack. She falls from the swing, and for a long time, she knows no more. Now, wild, energetic Katie has to cope with being an invalid. She finds she is no longer able even to stand up, let alone walk. And at first, she's utterly miserable. She's drowning in her own sorrows. She's rude to the other members of the family. She is unable to cope. But then Cousin Helen comes to visit, and Cousin Helen is also something of an invalid. And she teaches Katie some important lessons. And gradually, Katie learns to become better tempered, realizes that from her bed, she can still learn. She can even manage some of the household. Uh, And she becomes, in many ways, the center of her household, particularly after Aunt Izzy dies unexpectedly. So the book is really a a moral story in many ways. Katie learns many lessons, she gets her reward. Finally, she is able to stand up and to walk again. Uh, And it really is a gorgeous story. Now, Susan Coolidge followed it up just a few years later in 1873 with what Katie did at school. Katie and her sister Clover go off to a boarding school. And there again, they learn many things. They make new friends. They are unjustly accused of having done something wrong. And there's a real sense of resentment over that. They're very kind to a rather unpleasant teacher who falls ill. And uh, again, there are many things that are learned at school that are not just taught in the classroom. So I also really enjoy what Katie did at school. The next novel that came out was in 1886, What Katie Did Next. Once again, I have a rather battered uh, and rather unexciting looking copy. This one has no illustrations in it at all. But I love this one because Katie goes traveling. And as a young girl, I was longing to go to Europe and to see England. And Katie is lucky enough to go traveling with a friend uh, who has a young daughter and who wants a companion on her European journey. 
So in this novel, you get to see Europe through the eyes of a heroine that you have become very fond of. And just as an added bonus, you get some really lovely romance in the story as well. So you know that Katie's adventures are going to end happily ever after. Now, I don't have the next book in the series, but I believe you can find it on Project Gutenberg, so it is easily available on the web. And that's her novel, Clover, that came out in 1888. It was followed up by this one called In the High Valley. Now, I never had this one as a child. I believe that the Katie stories ended with what Katie did next. I had no idea there were two other books in the series. And when I found In the High Valley in a secondhand bookshop, I was so excited. I thought, oh, it's going to be wonderful to see what happens to Katie and Clover and Elsie and Dory and the various other children of the family. Well, I have to say I was very disappointed. I think Susan Coolidge would have done better to have just ended her series with what Katie did next. In the High Valley was pretty dull stuff, and I really can't recommend it. I do occasionally revisit the Katie books because of my great fondness for them as a child. I guess today's reader is going to find a book that looks like this one somewhat off-putting. Uh, it's obviously very old fashioned. It is a moral story, but I loved it and I still love every so often to go back and revisit what Katie did by Susan Coolidge. <laughs>